terror. What's up, YouTube? Mr. Lime SE here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Diablo Immortal, right? We're going to jump in and have that discussion about the game, a little bit about free-to-play games in general, the mechanics, the styles, the gachas, the, the pieces of it, and the psychology behind it, because honestly, I think that's the part to me that is most interesting and the the part that I like the least, right? When Diablo and Blizzard was talking about Diablo Immortal and when they took four years to really release this game, three and a half years, whatever it's been, um, you know, they were saying this is going to revolutionize it and whatever stuff. And I obviously still had plenty of doubts about Diablo Immortal um, and that it would just be, you know, another pay to win predatory game um, that, you know, abuses the kind of psychological stuff to get the whales in and everything like that right you know the standard mobile game um but the way they were talking about it, i was really kind of hoping that we would have seen something a little bit more right that they'd come out and be like look we can still create a cool mobile game that's fun to play and has some you know monetization features in it whatever it is blah 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 but we've changed it up so it's not so predatory so it's not so uh whatever right that was kind of my my hope with it unfortunately it really hasn't felt that way i think even if we feel there is some pieces of this game here that are feeling fun and good uh there's still so much of that other stuff that's really covering it that to me it's just painful so let's go ahead and discuss a little bit right here i'm going to pull up a little my, my little text notepad maybe i should do it on, on the this screen right here and we can discuss some stuff um, I've tried to play some of this game just to get a little bit of that understanding I'm obviously not like level 60 I don't have the full experience of it I didn't really want to go it, it didn't draw me in enough to get me all the way to that point I also didn't want to put in any money into the game because I'm not about that um, I just wanted to try and understand some of the base mechanics and pieces right here. Blah, 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 blah. Let me just do this so I can get my text a little smaller. So, but like I said, what I did want to do is I did want to get kind of a, a generic idea of the game to give it a fair review. Because my first review was after an hour, and obviously I didn't love the first hour that I played. But I thought, you know what, I can go in, I can do a little bit more of the story here. Um, and just kind of gain more knowledge on it to talk on it more. So let's discuss a little bit about free-to-play games at first. Okay, the first thing is you're going to have uh, a large in-game economy. Now there's been articles and things that have come out that have said it takes $110,000 to fully max a character in Diablo Immortal. Um, already the first part that's very sad to me this is the starting piece right this is the casual starting part of diablo immortal and my assumption my bet is that this number will only go up as the game continues on uh, as i believe that is the history of every single gacha mobile game that's doing really well it starts out I mean, I've played other mobile games before and it starts out and even the free to play experience can be fun a little bit at the start. Um, and then they add in another thing and they add in another thing. Because the problem is when you get someone to finally spend $110,000 and you get many people to finally spend $110,000, where do they go next, right? You have to give them more ways to continue spending money. So this is the you know, start, but in my opinion, it will only go up because of course, once somebody spends that amount, they then would what? Get bored, move on to the next mobile game, whatever it is, and companies would rather have them continue to spend in this game. Additionally, it allows you to have, you know, the oil baron and the Russian oligarch compete with each other um, because, you know, that's the best thing you want is them to fight and 
they both spend more money. Um, number two, right? Uh, the the types of players, and so the 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 best players to go after. You have your your players that like to um, play for like the story and content and all of this, and that's not a great person to go after because it takes too long to constantly release expansions and create all the new content for all of those people. Um, instead, you want to go after the people that want competitive advantages and the people that want uh, progress, essentially, right? Um, and then you can also go after people who want to look cool. But that's generally not as profitable. Um, but it still is something, right? So they, they, do, they have brought in the cosmetics for the game. Obviously, the competitive advantages with all of the legendary gems and upgrades and ways to just boost your gear and these Elder Rifts that are, what, $25, $50 a pop or something for running them? Um, competitive spelled wrong? Competitive. Sheesh. Um, you know, all, all of that stuff kind of goes there, but it also does go to progress. And this is a part that I do want to talk a little bit about. The current spot is... Uh, you know, they, they are not selling experience in this game and they are not selling items specifically in this game, a.k.a. I cannot buy, like, a better helmet. However, this game very much doesn't seem to play much around the items. The important thing much more seems to be all of the gems that go in the items. It feels much more like rune words in Diablo 2, where you have your bases, your flail or your phase blade or whatever it is, and those are like the items. And all the runes are the things that you can buy to put in them. So it's like, we're not technically selling you items, but if I took all maxed out legendary gems and shoved them in garbage items, I imagine I would still be really strong. That's my guess. Maybe not. I haven't fully looked into all of that. Oh, I can put a gem in. Yay. Green arrow go up. Um, so that's like the the piece of, of that stuff right there. Um, but I do, and this is, this is a question I almost have as well. I do wonder if, how the progress can be sped up a little bit. Um, because for instance, level 37 is, has been boring as all get out. Like I'm, I'm, I was already done with the game, but I'm like extra. I don't even want to continue exploring the game further, um, right now because it just kind of pushes me over to just doing like riffs over and over and over again. Or I can go do some of the like bounties or whatever stuff. I mean, I've, you know, done a few of the different things, but even those are pretty, like, boring and they're, you know, whatever pieces. Um, it's just like, go kill 60 of this monster, and you're just in a public area where everybody's killing them, and so you're just kind of waiting. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you you can say, like, Diablo 2 has boring end games as well, and I think that's totally, you know, totally fair, but this is, like on the in-between and it's literally in the middle of the like quest right uh like i want to get to level I, I have to get to level 40 to continue the campaign it's taking a while and it says go do elder rifts go to your bounties or go to your battle pass and i don't know it does upgrading my battle pass give me more experience? I don't think it actually does. Gain access to all empowered? It does? I know every time the battle pass levels up, you get more experience. But... I... Does buying this actually 
give you more experience. And we'll jump into this part in, in a tiny bit. Um, look at the bubble information. Where's this? Uh -huh. Every battle pass rank grants awards. Purchasing the empowered battle pass increases the rewards earned at each rank. Rank. Does this include experience? Rank relative to your current rank in addition to increasing the rewards earned at each rank. Um, I don't know. The, the part I can say is if I were to buy stuff and get stronger, I could go kill things faster, which means I could get experience faster. So that is one part. I don't want to get lost on this part too much. So we'll just continue there um, from that part. Okay. Hook uh, daily stuff. Make it uh, make you come back. Um, next point is the hooking into the daily, into the making you come back, all of that stuff. I don't actually hate this technique in general, um, just for like a game, right? There's dailies in the game. You have your uh, first kill of the day, right? Where you get a little reward every day that you come back and you kill something. You have your uh, daily activity rewards, um, those sorts of things. Of course, you have the daily claim in the shop, so it brings you to the shop to get your eye to the shop, that sort of stuff. But overall, I don't hate dailies in the game because I think it can still be fun. It gives you, you know, like, uh, in general, dailies in a game, I think, are not the worst thing, right? Like, that's like one that it's like, yeah, a lot of games have had dailies. It keeps you coming back. It keeps it fun. It keeps it something so you can like look forward to every day. Blah, blah, blah. The annoying part about this same thing is this hook daily stuff make you come back actually also applies uh, to monetization. Let me just do also applies to monetization. And this is where you get these hooks of the things like in the shop where you have these bundles. Right, your beginner pack, 800%, 99 cents, right? It is the get you to spend a single dollar. And they try and get you on this small hook. Then it's 99 cents. Then, and again, these are also coming after you kill a boss, which I think uh, this is one of my least favorite things they've put in is you only get this one time purchase once you've beaten the boss you're allowed to spend some money um i i really just it's disgusting to me but additionally you'll notice it starts out as 99 cents 99 cents then the forgotten tower trove is a dollar 99 then it's 4.99 then it's 6.99 and i imagine every single boss i beat here is going to just continue to slowly increment its way up in its cost um overall right and, but the general idea is we want to get you to spend a single dollar because this is the hook. Once you get in, yeah, and the bonus also goes down. Uh, once you get in, it is going to, you, once you spend a single dollar, your mindset changes. This is a psychological thing that they've, that they've analyzed multiple times is if you spend a dollar, you suddenly change your mindset from I would never spend money on mobile games to it's okay, it's just a dollar, you know, and it was a great little boost. This is 800% boost. I got this, you know, whatever weapon thing. I got some orbs, blah, 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 blah. It's not so bad. And then you'll, you'll be more willing to spend another dollar and then you'll be willing to spend $2 and then $5 and then $7. Like, each one of these bundle prices going up in these exact amounts, I think are very intentional. And this is where you start to wonder, uh, do they have more game developers at this company or more like psychologists Don't and marketing analyzers here? You know? P2W2 if you like? No, shut up. Um, so continuing forward, uh, we also have 
it's terrible it's comparison you're trying to bring into this. Sorry, I wasn't trying to be mean, <laughs> but sure, it has a small black market that exists. Uh, does that make the game pay to win compared to a, no, let's not even compare them. Um, continuing forward, uh, they have all of this. And so I just really despise that. Um, the gatches, right? This is the loot boxes. This is the gambling. This is the band in Netherlands plus Belgium, I think. Uh, this is why the game like literally doesn't exist in those places because uh, they're straight up the gambling. And a lot of games love to use this because it literally preys on people's gambling addictions. Um, and so instead of giving somebody the ability to just literally buy whatever the power is they give you that gambling box one it makes it a little bit more difficult to keep an idea of where the money is going exactly and how much you've spent on it and all of this um, but additionally it just has that gambling aspect and again i don't hate gambling i actually like to go play poker and this sort of stuff i also don't mind it in games in the way of like when you kill a boss, it's a gamble of what stuff is going to drop. Uh, when I hate it is when it comes in the form of buy box to try and get power upgrade or whatever stuff. Um, this also comes in the way of something like honing, right? Like we have in, in Lost Ark. Um, and, and so, you know, it's the idea of like, you have your chance to chance for success and it goes down the higher level you get and all of this. Um, and, uh, uh, but they have the pay to win option in there, right? They have the pay option so you can put more money in to roll it again. And, uh, it is gambling. You will not convince me that this isn't gambling when you're, you know, going for a random legendary gem and things like this. Um, so, you know, it it's like, okay, it that sort of stuff. Um, and then one more, you know, a couple more things. Five, whales take longer to uh, convert than small pay players. This is a known fact. Whales just need a longer time before they actually convert into paying, putting money into the game. So you need to have enough of a game there, a fun enough game, whatever it is that you can get them through, get them invested, all of that stuff. Um, and then of course, uh, don't make the game too hard. That's the last thing. You don't want the game to be too hard because then if it's too difficult and it requires a lot of skill, it, it scares people off for, for paying money, right? Whales and things like that. Instead, make it long and grindy. This is just common psychology here. Make it very grindy and then you can buy your way ahead, buy your power ahead, whatever it is. But make sure that the person that's dumping thousands and thousands of dollars puts a hundred thousand dollars in the game will crush anybody who's a better player way down before um okay so now let's take a look at this is kind of our our generic set stuff now let's take a look at diablo immortal specific right diablo immortal specifics And again, is the idea of a game having some grind in it bad? No. I mean, I think, you know, Diablo, just in general, lots of Diablo has grind in it. But there's also plenty of skill in a lot of, you know, something like Diablo 2 and stuff, right? Um, okay. Now, let's continue over to Diablo Immortal right here. So, things to note. Two times currencies... Purchase. I guess I can copy paste this because I've already got written out. Can be purchased with money, or I guess technically one. Right. 
not so much skill in Diablo 2, I highly beg to differ. Um, so you have your Eternal Orbs and Platinum. And what's really actually frustrating to me is Eternal Orbs can only be bought with real money from what I've seen. And I think this is actually something that really is kind of annoying in this game. I think if there was ways to earn Eternal Orbs, even at, you know, whatever slower pace, whatever it is, it would be a little bit nicer because then you could actually kind of use your Eternal Orbs to maybe go and target some things and whatever stuff. Um, that would be kind of nice, in my opinion. I know you can kind of earn Platinum. It seems like it's pretty slow, though, to earn. And... Again, there's even things like if you want to create a clan in this game, like I was like, ooh, let me make a, a clan for my friends. I don't know where that is anymore. Adventurer. I was like, ooh, let's let's make a clan for the llamas. It costs 3,000 platinum. I have 200. So you can't even make a clan without paying for it. And then there's also like the shadow clans or something which is another 3,000. Or maybe you just, it's 3,000 if you do that. And I don't know what an immortal clan is. I haven't even heard all that stuff. Um, so like even just trying to clan up with your friends is, uh, cost money, which is silly. Um, but regardless, you have all, you have many other forms of currency as well and things that are going through. And I mean, if we just, you know, quickly go to like the shop, we can see, um, that you have like all these different stones, which I still don't even know what these do. They're used for reforging. So something like that. Um, you do have that platinum there. You also have uh, the gems, your legendary gems. You have your runes, which are used for crafting gems. Um, you have all your different crests. Uh, you have your hilts which is used for trading to get stuff. And I actually want to show this really quickly um, because this part is really annoying to me. If we go to West March and go up here, this is kind of like a main spot coming up, which is where you are. Oh my God, I need help getting around this town. Oh, there it is. Where you're doing your rifts and things like this. Um, and right here is where you do your elder rifts and of course you know you have your like meh rare crest that you get like one a day from that and then of course your legendary crest which are awesome and give you legendary gems guaranteed and stuff it's you know a big pay to win thing and that's where you can spend like 25 50 bucks whatever it is the amount for like you know two minutes um, and right next to that is the crest merchant where you can literally just buy eternal legendary crest so they put a merchant over here whose whole thing is buying eternal legendary crest and this is part of the uh, game experience the campaign teaches you how to buy Eternal Legendary Crest. And he gives you your first one for free, right? Um, which I think is also some sort of psychological thing uh, right there. But yeah, the, the, the campaign itself takes you through this whole thing about how to buy Eternal Legendary Crest and go use them um, and whatever. But those rare crests that I want to add in over here, I have to actually go so far away i have to go all the way to where is the hilts trader even is he over here there he is i gotta run all the way you also don't have to run you can teleport over there kind of but it still ends up being about the same uh -huh, yes. time. Your reputation. You have to run all the way over here where you can purchase two of these a day. And then you get the one a day for logging in. And maybe, I'm sure there's a couple other places you can get a couple more of them. 
but there's also weekly purchase and monthly purchase limits of one. I can buy one legendary crest, one legendary gem per month. So again, this is, and one of these is a hundred, like what, $3 or something? I, uh, we'll get into that piece in a second. And I, it takes 1600 hilt, which I only have 2700 after, you know, what I feel like has been a decent amount of time. And I can only purchase one a month from right there. Um, and there's just, yeah. So really feels like locking you out of getting these legendary crests and all of this stuff and making it extremely hard. Uh, you can get all the runes you're collecting and slowly craft them up to get the rare runes, which you can eventually use to craft some gem. But again, it'll just take forever. Purchase limited to immortals. I don't even know what that means. Is immortal when you're level 60? Or I don't, I don't know. And then just, yeah. Regardless, this guy is way over there. And so I'm going to even uh, put in here just like, we'll do this, two, uh, distance plus campaign. If you pay to win enough, you can hold high ranks on guilds and those are immortals. Limited club for top pay to win guilds. Got you. Um, distance plus campaign plus uh, this next part, uh, confusion. Um, so confusion comes in the way of this. First off, your, your stuff is getting spread across a lot of things. I've got money that's in the orbs, but then the orbs, I'm, I'm, I'm getting platinum and then I'm getting gems and then I'm getting these crest and I kind of spread everything out. So again, I don't know how much I've spent. But um, if we do look, for instance, at just like currency, you'll see that the amount of orbs is actually below like a dollar, right? So I spend a dollar to get 60 orbs. And I think this is another psychological technique that's being used to once again make you a little confused on prices because it's very hard every time I'm looking at it to try and do the proper conversion to figure out how expensive something actually is, right? Oh, this is only a thousand eternal orbs, which in your mind, you go $10. That's like the first thing that I think when I see that. But a thousand eternal orbs is hard to say what it is because this is 600 for $10 and this is 1500 for $25. So first off, I can't just buy the thousand. I could buy 600, 300, 945. And then that, so I guess it'd be $16 for that cosmetic. But again, it's it, all of it is very uh, confusing to me and tries to kind of keep it in that spot. So you're just confused on what you've actually spent overall. And I'm sure many games do this, um, but again, it doesn't make it any better, right? It still has the same gacha, whatever piece of you know just trying to make it difficult for you and then I, again when he, i'm buying like a legendary crest and it says that legendary crest is 160 orbs now i'm trying to figure out how much is 160 orbs well five dollars is 315 and a dollar is 60 so two dollars is 120 so two 266 is a hundred and sixty? Is that right? Something like that. But again, that takes a lot of thought and all of this, and it's easier to just your mind. I think a lot of people's minds is just gonna go, oh, it's a, a buck sixty or something like that, right? Uh, or maybe two dollars or whatever it is. All of those sorts of things. So I really dislike that. But additionally, let's take a look at these elder crest, which are one of the most common things that you are going to be buying. And again, what was the price on the Elder Crest? It was 160 orbs, right? 
which times two is 320. So if I want to buy these 320, okay, I want to buy two crests. Let me go to the shop, purchase. I can only get 315 orbs for $5. Right? So, again, another thing that I completely believe to be intentional is the idea of force it close. You can't add the classic, ooh, you almost got it. And a similar idea that actually goes further, uh, uh, crest prices just under. If you've done 50 Elder Rifts, or used 50 elder crest i believe you are guaranteed to get a five star on your 50th one if you have not gotten a five star legendary gem yet but let me get my my calculator yeah thank you 7200 gems divided by 160 equals 45. So if I buy the 100 gem package, it will be 45 of those, which once again means I would still be a little bit short of that guaranteed 50th run where I would get a five-star legendary gem. So I would want to go and get some more all of that. And again, this is where I sit down and I go, you know, some of these could be coincidences, but a lot of times... Uh, when there's so many coincidences like that, you start to go, maybe this is intentional design where things are always just below to keep you in the loop, to push you in that one more purchase, that one little top off the whatever pieces it is, right? All of that stuff. Um, cosmetics in the game, we already talked about that, but that's just them kind of, I feel like tossing it in like, hey, we'll just get the cosmetics for the cosmetics people. Uh, the three times battle passes is interesting and confusing. So you have your regular battle pass. And of course, they bring you to this page over and over again. Um, and you have your, you know, oh, rank it up, right? Unlock. Uh, and it's the classic uh, kind of showing you what you're missing out on piece, uh, which I think is is the you know another another piece just kind of of these games, right? It's like here's what you're getting right now, some materials and stuff, but here's the bigger picture. Look at this legendary gem. Look at this ghost of Ashwold weapon cosmetic. Look at oh wow, you're getting more you know all of this stuff down here. Um, to kind of show like what you could be getting right is down here and of course it's going to get you like the elder the legendary crest and all of this you're missing out on this additionally at one point um, when I was going through the the battle passes I think it was when I hit I geez I don't remember where it was I hit some point and it was like are you sure that you want to miss out on what you have below. Like it, it popped up after I just collected like my gems or something. And it was like, are you sure you don't want to unlock what you've missed out on down here? Which again, just tries to pray, pray into the idea of the uh, you missing out, right? So you have that and then you have your battle pass, but then you have this bigger battle pass that gets you, um, access to all the tracks plus immediate cosmetic rewards and a rank boost which i don't even know what that means but i think that means it just automatically shoves you to rank 40. right that's my guess something like that um so it's just plus 10 levels oh okay just 10 levels sorry Sorry, sorry, sorry. I once again I haven't paid for it, so I have no clue. I'm I'm not going to pay for it. Uh, then you have um, the 
The Boon of Plenty. I know Zizarin loves this one. The Boon of Plenty right here. Where's, where's this thing? There it is. Where you get 30 days of benefits in addition to the daily login rewards, right? And again, it's like your daily login, but you could be getting even more. And this also gives you remote mark, market access, which is just very nice. And this is one of the pieces that I really hate is when this when something like this that you pay for gives you access to something like this because here's how the game was developed. They developed it where you could access the market from anywhere and then they were like, "Hmm, let's make the game worse unless you pay for it." And this is why I hate games nowadays versus games that were made 20 years ago is games that were made 20 years ago, they were like, look at this cool feature we can implement. Awesome, we got it in. And now they're like, okay, we've added features. How can we make it worse, a worse experience for the player unless they give us money? So it's not even that it's when you pay, you get additional stuff. It's that when you pay, you get features that we could have given you in the first place easily that would have just made the game better, right? And this is something I also kind of dislike a little bit with like the currency tab in Path of Exile and why, I, you know, people are like, oh, it's fine, blah, blah, blah. Tabs aren't pay to win. But it's like the currency tab in Path of Exile should just exist in the game, but they decided we're going to make the game harder for the average player and really confusing and difficult to manage all of your currency unless you pay money for it. And I know Zizarin agrees with me on this as well. So if you're like, oh, you don't play Path of Exile. Well, one of the biggest POE streamers there does. Um, it's a free to play game. They're gonna make you, you know, want you to get money in, sure, right? Whatever you wanna say. I'm just saying the idea still comes that game is harder now only because they've restricted it intentionally not like harder just like a worse game they've restricted it intentionally unless you give them the money there now however you want to justify it go for it you can justify it however you want to me it's just something that i i personally despise when they, they have features like that and then they remove them for the people that don't give money, right? And then of course you get more market slots and more inventory and all this stuff, uh, the casual things. But uh, going in this, uh, you get the instant benefits of that plus the daily gifts, so another daily thing. Um, and then unlocked benefits are revoked once it expires. And daily gifts can only be claimed by logging in each day while it's active. Otherwise, they will be lost. So again, it's the uh, it's that piece of, you know, if you don't log in, you've spent money and you're not getting any value out of it, right? So Boon of Plenty um, is just a classic daily pay plus FOMO. Um, and they're generally like, you know, a decent value because again, it's going to force you in and you've already put money in as well and it gets you into that. Can you just put money into this game once? If they can get you to put money into this game once, the chance of you putting money into this game again is going to just be so much higher. Right? Um, just the classic piece. Now, I also noticed uh, name change was, was money and only eternal orbs because I was just looking around I was like oh I can change my name oh no it costs 300 eternal orbs once again uh, by itself I'm like I don't hate this you know I think that's a totally fine way that you could you know put something like that uh, into the game but just another thing I noticed I was just trying to look at all the ways that you could spend money in this game um, legendary gems now this is the big one uh, because we have that uh, piece that we had before, which is one, uh, only two times per month can be bought by free to play using Hilt's Trader. Um, gems are capped at two stars for rare crest. 
So if you do get a legendary gem from a rare crester, oh my, the text is like being dumb here now. I hate when this thing does it. I don't know how to how to fix it. Um, and so you have to do the legendary crest. The legendary crests are unlimited in the cash shop. Uh, and then there's this thing called awakening in the game. So once you get your gem to level five, which would take years and years and years to get all of your gems to level five if you're free to play, once you once you take your uh, gems to level five, you can then do something called awakening, which requires pay. It costs sixteen dollars to buy something called a something of dawn. Where did I write that down? Uh, echo, a dawning echo. It's a thousand eternal orbs. You can only get it from eternal orbs from what I've seen and heard. You need rank 10, excuse me, rank 10 which I don't even know how you get rank 10. You get like a five-star gem and then you get it five-starred or something like that as well. And then you can put more legendary gems into your gear once it's been awakened. Something like that. I haven't gotten to 60 and done this process. It like unlocks resonance and resonance works by allowing you to add more legendary gems into your awakened items. But again, it requires pay I'm pretty certain. All this false and missing information to push the narrative. This is from my reading and talking with people. Now, I am totally open to somebody saying, you do not need money to get dawning echoes. You can get them from XYZ. Totally down for it. I, I would love to see it, but so far I've only seen it can only be obtained through the materials tab in the game shop for a thousand eternal orbs. I've read that like 10 times and that's what people at level 60 have told me. So unless you have proof, you can get them off the store once per year. What? <laughs> Okay, that doesn't even count once per year. Um, so the the legendary gems are the, are the thing that continues to just go and continue there and everything. Uh, and yeah, and the the overall piece. And I mean, we've just kind of got a bunch of text all over the the screen now. It's not great, but whatever. The overall piece though is because there's a lot of defenders of the game, um, which is fine. Again, if you want to defend the game, if you want to play this game, if you want to continue through and do all that stuff, you know what? Like, I'm not here to tell you you can't do it. I'm not here to tell you you're dumb. I am simply here to state I am very saddened by the amount of predatory stuff this will do that exactly by the amount of predatory stuff that does exist in the game uh i'm saddened by the um the full way that the game has even played through for me here i don't i don't i'm not gonna put any money into this game i'm not gonna be one of the streamers that throws thousands into it to be like oh look um I'm just going to be here to, to, to show this. And already, like I say, at, at level 37, all this stuff, like I, I feel that pressure that they want me to feel, right? Because the game is just fun enough, not 
crazy fun, but it's okay. You go and you can, you know, a attack it and, and, and blow stuff up. It doesn't require a ton of skill. Um, it, it's, you know, grindy. But, like, if I'm sitting on the toilet and, and was, uh, you know, playing it and stuff, whatever, then, like, okay, sure, the game could be fine. And I believe if you took away all of the monetization features, except, you know, whatever, some basics like cosmetics and whatever stuff, if you took away all that stuff and they, you know, removed some of the features like remote market only existing behind a paywall and things of that, then like, hey, maybe the game actually could be something that I'd look at and go like, that's nice. And if the game wasn't built with so many psychological things of when they slow you down and you know how long they make the game fun for before it gets to the grind where it entices you to try and put money in and all of that stuff um i could be much more forgiving of pieces and i think the game would actually be, be improved a lot i think the level 37 block and 38 and 45 and all of those like kind of blocks that they've thrown in there intentionally to slow down the progress after you just had great progress in the first uh you know like whatever amount the first you know 30 levels and all of this stuff you could say hey like yeah it's still very much diablo 3 looking and still all this and whatever stuff but you could at least say the game maybe has some value and some fun but the problem the biggest problem i have defending anything in any this way and even acknowledging the fun parts of this game is that i feel like by acknowledging that stuff i would i would be accepting that this is the state of the game uh that i'm okay with them making and that is the biggest point that I want to make here is I am not okay with this being the type of game that they're going to be putting out. That's it. You can say, oh, it's fun for a mobile game or oh, it's blah, 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 whatever it is. But like this is, this is that point where I look and I'm just like, I mean, we, we have to, to stand together at some point and they probably still won't care because there's going to be enough whales and enough people with gambling addictions and things like that that they will take advantage of and they'll put money into the game and they'll just laugh and say we don't care um but it's just you know it's just not cool in in in, in my books and i just i want it's sad but i want this game to fail because i want them to go, hmm, maybe we should go back to not making games like this. And again, I think this game actually had potential to be a really good game. I think there's parts of it that I played through and I was like, this could actually have been a decent mobile game, right? And a decent port and all of this stuff. But, uh, you know, it just, it, it just is is that point where it's just like I'm tired of it I'm 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 very and I'm very saddened by it and it just if this game succeeds then they make this game again they make Diablo Immortal 2 they make every you know IP every game from here on out goes in this way because it's just going to be more profitable and whatever stuff and some people are like oh they'll use this game to make Diablo 4 a great game that's gonna be, you know, not pay to win and not have any of that stuff. And you know, like, sure, that's a great hope, uh, but it feels like copium right there, right? It feels like, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's the case. And at the same time, if they continue down this path, eventually all they're gonna have is developers that know how to develop these games and uh, not, developers that develop really solid amazing games that are built just to be great games standing on their own without all of the uh, psychology and marketing and all of that stuff so that to me is why i'm i'm very saddened and disappointed by this game um and and you know why i just overall uh You know, I, I can't support it. I just, I just really, it's hard for me to support it because as somebody who 
plays Blizzard games for my life and all of that. Um, I'm just really, you know, I just want them to do better than that. And the game, like I said, the game could be a great game. Um, and it could have been a great game, but I can't even I can't even acknowledge all the good parts, the parts that I enjoyed of it, because it just leads to so much stuff, so many pieces, like I said, so many coincidences of uh, stuff that I just thought was too predatory. So with that being said, Goodbye, Diablo Immortal. Hello, D2 Resurrected.